there we go. I think I'm recording. Yeah. Okay, so in this Zoom, um, I'm going to talk about market structure. And uh, I'm going to try and make it into a rule-based method to understand whether, um, uh, how you can decide whether structure is bearish or bullish. So, because I want you guys, if I ask you a question, if I ask you whether structure, whether a trend is bullish or bearish, I want you to be able to say it just like that. And uh, there's only two rules that you need to be aware of. So let me move this out of the way. So obviously when, um, when we're learning how to trade, we say obviously from point A to point B. Okay, so this is obviously a bullish trend, right? But price, isn't, price doesn't move like this. Price moves. price moves like this, right? But in theory, this is, how we, this is how you see it in a textbook if you're trying to learn how to trade, but price doesn't actually move as clean as that. So it does make it a little bit difficult to understand structure. So what price actually does, you tend to get something like some weird shit like this. Yeah? So it's, it's nothing clear. But what happens is, is when price is doing this in here, and okay, that's a that's not as difficult to understand but in terms of these two what tends to happen is you tend to question whether price is turning uh, bearish right but you still need to understand the bigger picture so what happens is before you get a start of a trend what price tends to do is slows down why does that pop up there oh no oh one time oh oh there you go oh no <laughs> All right, I got this. I got this. So, what tends to happen before uh, price changes, right? So, say we're going from a bearish move, price tends to slow down. Okay, then it forms like some sort of consolidation period. Now, this essentially is wick off, but we're not obviously we don't teach that because we don't need it. But that's essentially what's happening. Price is accumulating at this point. But then what happens? You'll get an impulse and a retrace, and then an impulse again, right? And then you get whatever happens here and then price will carry on now to understand whether i want to confirm whether trend is bullish what you first need is that first structural break which is this impulse okay so that's number one you need this first break number two is you need a retrace that doesn't fail so um i mean it fails to create new lows this is for a bullish trend okay and that retrace needs to generate enough uh, enough push to break structure. So that needs to break this structure. Let me, uh, oh, I can't rub out on it, can I? Do I have to delete the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, 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 nah. One use one of those whiteboard sort of apps or something like that. I would if I. Paint actually, 3D. You're on paint. Boys, <laughs> I, can do, I, I can do some special thing, you know, I can connect my iPad here. Oh yeah, you can mirror it, can't you? I oh, don't kill it, man. I'm gonna sound. I was gonna sound bare technical, you know. <laughs> like I'm doing some next coding shit, right? Uh, <laughs> Jesus, uh, it's not funny, you know. It's uh, it's a lot of hard. It's difficult for me. Um, what are you said about it, technology? I don't know. Considering I'm Asian as well, you'd be. You'd Wait, how old are you? Than than how old? I'm yeah. 24. 24. <laughs> Somehow. Uh, Oh, I made it. I, I made it to 24. Uh, worse than your dad. <laughs> yeah, with technology. That's like yeah. 60. That's a violation. Don't have that one. <laughs> and you never told me when your birthday is. I need to get you that t-shirt. My birthday is ages. It's in um, uh, August. Oh, I'll remember. Oh, shit. <laughs> you won't remember. <laughs> I think that was the last video I was drawing. Yeah, it is. That's the candle video. Yeah. Right. Can you guys see it? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Me too. Okay. So what was I saying? So say, let's say price is coming down from a bearish trend and we get this consolidation period. Now we get this impulse and then we get some sort of move and then it breaks structure. Actually, let me, let me draw it a bit differently so I can make it a bit more complex. So you get that. Okay. So to confirm whether price is bullish or bearish, you need that first structural break, which is this impulse, and you need that retrace. So we also got a retrace here, here, and here, but to confirm whether price is bullish, that retrace needs to come and break this structure. So that's our structural point that price <laughs> is breaking. 
And that's a confirmation that price has just turned bullish. So is that the same thing as seeing as um, an LG? So this is essentially grabbing liquidity from the previous lows that's created, right? And then price is gone. Okay, so that's going to confirm whether price is uh, bullish in this situation. So number one, you need that first impulse. And number two, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Number two, you need that retrace. Now, bear in mind, the reason why we need this retrace is um, when price is obviously coming back, you have, say, the previous low was here. You don't want price to violate this low. If price violates this low, then that means we are wrong and price is going to continue going uh, bearish. Okay. We need price to respect it, respect an OB here. We won't be looking for a trade at this point. Unless you want to, if your risk appetite is high, then obviously go for it. But, you know, we want that confirmation that price is actually turning bullish. And once you get that, then obviously you know that you're looking for buys in that sense. So this confirms change of trend. Yes. Yeah. So you need those two things. You need that impulse that breaks structure and you need a retrace that generates enough power to break structure again. Okay. So you don't want, um, when you get... Um, so it's only after the second break of structure that you'd, you'd be like strong, sure that it was that bullish. Yeah, yeah, essentially that. Okay. So Thanks. when you get obviously the first impulse that breaks, then you get these weird uh, retracements because you know price isn't that smooth, and then you get that net. Oh, Tanzin. Tanzin. Oh wait, I never say my full name to be fair. Okay. So when you get this, okay, obviously you've got a break of structure here, but. This impulse, right, created this high, okay? And uh, is Dean here? Dean? I assume so, I swear I saw him. Okay, yeah, whether yeah. he's here or not, okay, he's here. Um, when you're marking your structural high, you use the wicks to, mark, to map your structure. So, but we're still going off the body break. Does that make sense? Can you repeat that, please? So, um, you know when we're breaking structure, obviously we use the body, so say that, that's a structure break, right? Yeah. But say the next candle creates, okay, that's a bad example. Say the next candle creates a candle like this, but the wick is there. Map this as your high. So right. map that as your highest point. Okay. So when you're in this situation, obviously because price is broken structure here, we're not going to say that the OB is here. Why? Is because this retrace didn't break this structure. So this is not powerful enough to move and break this. So we can't say that um, that was the true move, okay? Because bear in mind, all we're trading is within a certain range, right? So say we just, broke, we just broke this structure, right? We are trading and price is coming back. We're trading between this range. We're gonna look at the most extreme point, the most, ex bloody hell, the most extreme point is that down here, okay, most likely. So whatever is happening, say whatever is happening here, it doesn't matter until price comes, ah, oh, there we go, until price comes anywhere near here, okay? But that retrace, wherever it is, it needs to be the one that breaks the structure, and that will be your lower high. So forget wait, everything wait, else. Wait, wait, um, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't understand. Um, when you were talking about price, um, shit. Um, so I think so. Hold on, hold on. On on the first drawing, yeah. Um, the 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 lower part parts that you said that was not the break of structure. Yeah. What, what, yes. 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 Yeah. Why did you say that? Um, that's what I'm explaining now. Like, okay, like, hold on for one second, right? Because in real time, right, we don't know that the price is going to drop lower than that low, right? No, At that we point, we don't know whether the price is going to um, go lower than that low. So now, if it's coming down to... um. Um, that low point you um, you um, circled, right? Even though it broke that small high, why would you say that it's not big enough 
to like I don't Okay, I think I, I think I understand what you're trying to say. So what it is, so that this first move, this first impulse created this high, yeah? This high here. Okay. 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 Now what's happening here is although price broke this structure, it didn't break the high that was created by the main impulse. And that is where okay, the OB okay, comes okay. in. Okay, 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 I get, I get, I get, I get, I get, I totally understand now. So, right? so, <laughs> so, this move in the middle, right? It's yeah. like, it's like noise. It's like yeah, noise. Exactly. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but you wouldn't know, you would, you would need to look at the bigger picture because it's in real time. I, I, I understand. I yeah, understand so... now. I understand. If, if it priced it this though, say if price reacted this OB but then broke structure, this is going to be our point of interest that we're going to trade from, not down here. Okay, okay, okay. So that initial structure, oh, Tan's in again. That initial structure, right, that is here, once that's broken, that confirms that trend is Oof. bullish and that's when we can start looking for trends, trades. Okay, okay, so we need to break the highest points. From, oh, the from the last, first... from the from the low, yeah, yeah. So, so when, so when you're marking out your weekly low, your um, daily low, and your hourly low, right? We are looking to break the highest points. Like if we're in a bullish trend now, we're looking to break the highest points from where, um, ah. Uh, from from like the highest point from before the the noise that we made yes yeah exactly that and it regardless of what it doesn't matter what time frame you're using it's the same concept to confirm the trends on that time frame oh okay 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 does that make so, sense right. yes yes yeah perfect it's the same thing for um if you're going bearish which i'll cover now so it's the same thing. Say price is obviously doing this. It starts slowing up, does all this random stuff. Then we get this impulse and then price does this. It does this weird thing. Then it retraces and comes back. Okay. Again, same thing. We're not going to focus on this move that broke structure because it wasn't strong enough to break the overall high. No, low, sorry. Okay. This is a strong retrace and that's where power was generated to break structure. So number one was this impulse that broke structure. Number two was that the retrace was successful. So that confirms that price has now gone bearish. So now we can start looking for trades at this point to continue. And that, if you look at, if you look at it per carefully, that is our entry confirmation. That's our LG. And that's our first entry. Our next entry will be here. And it doesn't matter what time frame you're looking at, this is all that you're following. So in terms of everything else, you know, we are basically trading structure. That's all you need to see. We're not trading anything, anything else. So although we're using OBs, OBs or IFCs or IPAs, whatever you want to call it, they're, still, they're all the same thing. We're using that as our entry. But this is all we're trading. This is your blueprint, and that's all you need to imprint in your heads that this is all we're looking for. So that's all we're training our eyes to see. Did that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, so the first thing is we need the first impulse that breaks structure. Number two is we need a retrace, and to confirm that retrace, it needs to break the structure that was formed. So say in the situation where, um, say in the situation where you're like this, uh, you just break structure here, and then you obviously get these weird retraces, like something weird like this. And then you get one that's quite high, but quite low, sorry, that breaks structure. This is going to be your lower high. If price, fa if price breaks that, that's going to change your trend. And you shouldn't expect price to come anywhere beyond the price that broke structure. Okay, so be confident in taking the OB that is here. Right? Oh. Wait, wait, sorry. Uh, so you're basically saying, right, that, um, okay, but what happens to the top, right? Like, that's not the highest point. 
I'm looking at a bearish move. Yes, like like y- yes, it it is a bearish move that um that that broke the lower high. Yeah. And then we went up. So why are you calling the second place? So sorry that that broke that broke the higher lows sorry why are you calling the second place this your one. lower high yes your lower high not the t not the top part because, because the old... yeah so this was the one that generated enough power to break the structure so none of these were all of these are like james they're weak okay they can break any structure <laughs> 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 Right. Oh, oh my! This one This one is me. So I'm strong enough. I'm stronger than James. So I broke structure. Okay. So you only need to focus on the one that was strong enough to break the structure that was formed from the first impulse. Everything else is noise. We don't need to. We don't need to worry about that. And I think this is where the losses are happening. Even for me, the losses happen here and I get tricked out as well. It's not always that clear. But that's because sometimes I can be a little bit impatient and start f- forcing trades from a break structure. So that's why, uh, James, you cannot report bullying, by the way. I just said <laughs> chat. Um, that's why, you know, we need to focus on the main structure point. So I wanted to make structure into a rule-based method where you can confirm whether trend is bullish or bearish. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, I didn't have time. Uh, I wasn't home, but I didn't have time to get any chart examples, to be fair. Um, so what I'll do during the week, um, I'll record another video, a proper video about structure, and I'll uh, post it up on the Discord. But that mm. is what I wanted to give out um, today, just to make sure you guys have that and see if that makes any difference for you uh, for this trade week to come. Okay. Thank you. And, Thank you. Somebody, somebody sent in um, an example of a third reversal. Uh, oh, I said it, in, but I don't know if it's right. You lot can let me know if that's right. But um, uh, it's an example of a failed one. Yeah, a Euro AUD. Right. Let's, have a, let's have a look. Let's have a look. On the fourteenth to twenty third. Where is it gone? Oh, <laughs> there you go. Um, Christ, what do I have marked out here? Um, where was it? The 2014. Basically what I'm saying in real time, if you were playing that out, you would, that would be a situation where you might think it was, it was going to go bullish. Ah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, yeah, this is a very good example. Actually. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Okay. So obviously we can see this consolidation period, right? And it, the impulse yeah. created this, um, this high. But the retrace that happened, it was too weak, okay? It was James, and it couldn't make it, mm. right? But instead, it carried on going, and price continued going short. Again, what happened? Right, this impulse... James, <laughs> it's James here. Yeah, he's here. This impulse that obviously broke structure, but the retrace obviously should be coming somewhere around here. It okay, wasn't... yeah, yeah, because this was, the, this was the OB that generated the, the, the big move, yeah? The big move, yeah. But yeah. our trend wasn't confirmed. Why? Because number two was that the retrace wasn't strong enough to break this structural high. So trend is still bearish. Okay, so 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 hold on, right? So at that retrace, yeah, because that is what you classify as a risky entry, yes? See, this one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Say so, okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understand now. Understand, understand. Yeah. So yeah, let me go to because I think there might be uh, a bearish. Yes, perfect. Okay. So, so I didn't mean to sound so excited there, but okay. So we've obviously created this uh, impulsive nature right here. Impulsive moves. The retrace happened here. Okay, which obviously we would expect to hear, and that impulsive nature came and broke structure. But if you think about it, what's happening on in like carefully if you look at structure what's happening inside is where's my brush gone so obviously we're creating this low then we break come up again we come then we perform this base that comes and breaks structure the break of structure happened from here not from up here 
okay and then that's where price obviously it's, hot, it's easier for me to say in hindsight but that is essentially what i've just shown you on um my drawing so uh, yeah sorry sorry is it possible for you to change to lines for a bit i just want to see something yeah uh, how do i do that um, um you, there is just just close to the um the time oh, after the month yeah, yeah, yeah you you'd see oh okay okay oh yeah it's even okay. clearer on here to be fair the structure yeah, yeah, came it's from actually here. how it's, it's 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 how i find it i just like change to lines and then that's a very good I, tip to be fair yeah yeah thank you yeah, that's a very good tip yeah, <laughs> take notes take notes guys that's a yeah that's a good one i've never even checked lines to be fair james do you is he that upset? He's not talking to me now. James? <laughs> well, what is oh, I think, and what were you saying? Sorry, what do you say? Have you ever used lines before? I used to use it for daily and weekly, um, what do you call it? Supply and demand. Nah, like, um, I've, I've completely forgotten the word. Basically, he never used it, he just chatting shit. Buyer. Oh, for like range. Buyer, <laughs> that's the word. But um, no, I don't anymore. But no, it's good. It's just easier to see sometimes if the candles aren't very clean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's the main concept that I wanted to show you about structure. Um, was there any part of that that didn't make sense or you don't understand the rule-based understanding of it? If there's anyone. Hi, Tans. Um, I've got a question. Yes. Regarding continuation and candles that break structure so what yeah. is there like a rule-based way we can say this is a continuation candle and this is a candle that broke that led to the break of structure right yeah um so mm, okay uh, bear with me. or do we just get to, like have to get a feel of it um, no, I'll, I'll show you in a drawing. Uh, I forgot how I did that now. Bear with me. There we go. Okay, so in terms of continuations, uh, let's see, it's blue. So in terms of continuation, say when you get uh, obviously candles like this and the ones are shaded in okay we'll do it like this and then you obviously get a pull back and then it carries on dropping okay obviously it's very clear which is the ob in this point but sometimes when you get trades when you get uh say if you get a break of structure which is happening from this move here but you get another uh, bullish candle here so that's say that's the bullish candle but it carries carries on going bearish continues that's a continuation there's no pullback in that sense however in some situations when you get um, <coughs> when you get obviously a drop that's coming and then you form like some sort of a base it doesn't matter how many candles there are it could be two candles and then sometimes you get a wick that comes so that's the wick trick that is a pullback on a lower time frames so that would that would be an indication that that would be uh, the point that you'd be looking at as your point of interest. So in terms of continuation, is if the move is just continuing, but if you get some sort of base that's forming, that's where you would look for your um, your OB in that sense. If that's the one that broke, so say structure broke from here, right? But this is your last uh, bullish candle before the bearish move. That's not your OB here. Your OB is still going to be here. Whereas if you were to have, um, if you were to have like, for example, a base that's forming here and then it carries on dropping, your OB is here. Or oh, okay. if you were to have, okay. if you were to have this, where you get two candles, one wick that comes up that, and then it keeps dropping, you still got that base there. That's your point of interest, that broke structure. Sorry, but Dan, you, but unless the base is equals, then then obviously... Yeah, wait, um, and, Hold on, you confused me there. What do you well, mean? Well, if the base is equals, yeah. it's, you'll obviously wait for the liquidity grab, don't you? E, 
I still don't know what you mean. <laughs> no, obviously, that's talking? a wick trick. Me, Shredder. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So basically, if this is um, so you got a wick trick there. But if that wick was just the base was equal, you'd, you'd wait for equals to be taken out, wouldn't you? Uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. you would. I. Yeah. Yeah. There's no. Ah. Oh, ah. Oh, wait. How did I go? Oh, there we go. So yeah, so uh, if it was just like this, yeah, sorry, that's a good, that's a good point actually. If it was just like this, there's no sense of a pullback here, but it is still a base that's formed. Um, and if you want to use that as a POI, you can mark it out. But in this situation, it's probably best waiting for the most extreme point, which is here, because there's no indication of a pullback that caused uh, structure to come. Now, in terms of what's going on inside the wick, make sure you've watched uh, the candle video because that would explain why this is so significant to have in terms of a point of interest. Yeah, so, yeah, I watched that, that one. Yeah. Uh, did that answer the continuation question? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll rewatch. I'll rewatch the Zoom recording and, and then I'll go over some back testing. If, you if it still doesn't make sense, I'll ask you on yeah. Discord. Yeah, there's um, there's a few. Oh, I can't remember which one it was. I find it on the Discord. It was a CAD yen trade where the continuation candle, uh, continuation bit came up. Uh, I can't remember if it was November or September, something around there. Um, there is a continuation candle which I explain on there. Um, so have a look at that. I'll try to find it myself. I can't remember. There's so many there. Um, I can't remember which one it was, but if I find it, I'll post it into the the group chat. But that yeah, explains that's the continuation. Yeah, that's bit. All right. Thanks. And you trying to make a PDF of what's covered right now? I'm going to do a separate video um, and I'm going to try to find, well, I'm going to use actual trade examples. <laughs> because, um, yeah, because I realized that uh, obviously structure, especially the way that I teach it, it's not, it's not the easiest. Um, it is very hard. But, and sometimes it's quite hard to define what, what a trend actually is. So I was thinking this whole week, how can I make it as simple as possible? And I thought, these are the only two criteria that need to be met. Um, and, you know, if you guys can just focus on those two, you can confirm if I was to ask you if this is bullish or bearish, you, can, you should be able to answer that straight away by just looking for those two things. Regardless of what time frame you're on, you can just look for those two things. Um, now, another thing that, um, which I thought was quite, uh, which I thought was quite good to sort of mention is say for example and it doesn't matter what time frame you are using to say you get this why do I draw it like that oh sorry okay say you get this breaker structure right oh okay so you get a breaker structure and price starts to come back okay so now we've got a, oh, tens Okay, so we get a breaker structure here, okay? And say price is already, ah, oh, now cute dog. <laughs> uh, say we got a price that's obviously bearish now. We confirm that trend is bearish. We are looking for an OB here. Now, obviously, whatever's happening is here, as I've said, it's noise, okay? Now, to determine whether we're gonna obviously stop looking at it, you wanna see, if you see in terms of range, so let me draw that in a different color. If you're seeing it in terms of range like this, we aren't interested in anything until it goes to the extremes. Okay. If price comes and breaks structure, price is gone and we're going to be looking at a new POI. Okay. If it doesn't reach our first one, but instead, but if price doesn't come and break structure, if it doesn't do that, okay, what we're going to wait for is for price to reach our POI. So we're going to be patient. doesn't matter what time frame you're doing. If you're on the one minute, the hourly, doesn't matter. We're still going to focus on that range. So a good example is, um, I'm pretty sure it's a good example. I just remember from the top of my head. Uh, so GDP USD. Oh, let me get rid of the brush. Okay, so let's go to the hourly. Yeah, here. So obviously, when we're thinking about um, range here so it's obviously here and here that came and broke this structure we've got a pullback that came and broke structure but we've got plenty of imbalance and price needs to come back so you're going to hold for your price and that'll be your high that's obviously formed so price is now coming back into this okay so we're patiently waiting whatever's happening price hasn't gone bearish and ignore that this is the fact this is one hour so regardless of what time frame this is exactly what you're going to be doing and you're going to replicate and get on every single time frame that you're going to use 
So once price is obviously entering the POI, which is in, in here, right? So let's go into this. Uh, let's go one minute. I wonder why this is in my head. I think someone sent it. Yeah, someone sent it in the group actually. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Okay, so, uh, so let's go to, okay, that may confuse people. Let's go here. Okay, yeah, yeah. So what can we see is um, it's the same thing is we got this low that's here and the form, it formed this high. But although it obviously broke structure here, we still can't ignore the fact there's imbalance there that needs to be touched. So this is still forming the high that's there, okay? But we still, if there's imbalance there and a clear OB, then we still need to consider that as the trend, okay? Obviously, you can use half your risk here if you wanted to, but if there's pure, if there's clean imbalance, you've got a reason to. And if you get this point of interest that's sitting here, right, and say if you obviously get a good trigger and then price goes, and obviously when you break structure, you should be break even anyway. So is, there's no harm in taking a trade at this point because obviously it has broken structure, but price still has a reason to come back here. Okay, so just bear that in mind when you're taking this trade. So either use half your risk here, or just use full risk, whatever risk you wanna use. And obviously when price breaks structure, you move into break even, as, as you would anyway. And you probably take some partials at this point if you want to, that's completely up to you. But you can't ignore, if there's anything that's clear underneath, you can't ignore the fact that this still broke structure. They broke, uh, uh, hold on a sec, because I realised I just drew loads on it. Oh, they've done a circle again there, can't see it. Shut up, man. <laughs> right, so obviously what you see is it created this, um, this low, which obviously then broke this high. So it's a very small structure, but it obviously broke, and we've still got this POI that needs to be touched. If this POI was obviously mitigated, then this would be the cleanest entry to use. Price only came back. Why? It's because as retail traders, we aren't creating this move. The banks are, institutions are, right? That's why we still, this is the footprint that we're going to trade off. And that's why price came back here. This trade was not wrong. Okay. Even though this came and broke structure, it was not wrong to take a trade off this. In fact, that would have been a good entry. And I, I would have taken that myself. But you still need to bear in mind if this trade fails, and if you watch the last GUP USD breakdown, um, it will explain this. If this trade fails, we know we've got POI, which is clean, which is here, right? So that is why this trade worked out so well. But we are focusing on what is happening inside the range. So it doesn't matter what time frame you're using. Uh, for example, even the weekly, um, like this was a very good example on the, on the YouTube video, actually, that we're trading, obviously, this, oh, tans we're trading this range. That's why we're still continuing the fact that price is bullish, regardless of what time frame you're using, okay? But you're still trading whatever range. It could be one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute. I'm not gonna keep counting, but it doesn't matter. You're just gonna focus on what is happening at that moment within that. And you're gonna look for if anything has been mitigated or not, okay? So if it goes back to, oh, it's gonna be hard to find at the minute, isn't it? Uh, let me get rid of my drawings. Where was it? Where was it? Oh, there. Um, so if you go back to here, same principle. Not 30 seconds, wasn't you? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Wait, where was I? Oh, the here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So exactly the same thing. We're going to focus on the ranges that's forming. Okay, so again, this was a very clear, obviously a clear range to use between, oh, tan, bloody hell, man. Relaxing your name, don't you? Here and here, only when I've done something stupid. But <laughs> obviously, we're still waiting for the extreme, which is here at this point, but we can't ignore what's happening below. So that's why I said, even if you're, if it's within the POI and you still got a clean OB that needs to be mitigated, go for that one. Okay, when I say I go for the extreme, that is the extreme. Okay, but obviously this is still a valid trade to take because it's still the one that generated power to break structure, right? But this one still broke structure on this point. Obviously on the 30 second time frame is a little bit more uh, difficult to, for some of you to see because if you, if you don't have it, but it's exactly the same principle. I just thought this is a clearer example. 
but why, I'll would show you for, why would you go for the extreme? Is that safe entry? Yeah. But you're more likely to miss a trade, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, I'll call with you. But remember, as traders, our first objective is to preserve capital. Okay, it's not to risk it. Every trade is a risk, but we want to take the safest and highest probability trade. Right? So if we miss trades, it's not really a problem because we know the next one to one to ten, one or whatever plus is just around the corner if we keep looking. All right. Because opportunities are everywhere and we all know that. But we just need to be cautious of how we trade and not be too it's up to you actually i'm not going to tell you how to trade but it's up to you how aggressive you wish to be for me um i like to be quite relaxed so i wait for my points of interest to reach completely so i don't care how long price for example let's go back to the hourly and when price when price broke structure this structure here and came up it took how long did it take it took four days to come to the point of interest now this this four days causes a lot of impatience it's not saying that you can't trade obviously counter trend because you can using the same principle because on a lower time frame that's probably going to show a bearish trend and now we know how to confirm that right with our two steps simple as that exactly the same thing we're going to do it here again looking for a bullish if you want to go counter trend you need to confirm that trend is actually changing and remember, price is fractal. So whatever price is doing in the lower time frame will replicate on the higher time frame. But if you're going counter trend, be realistic with your targets. So say you'll see if you're going counter trend here, you're going to look for positions where you're going to buy from. You may look for buys from here. You're going to look for buys from here. So you're going to take partials at this point or close your trade at that point or take partials here and leave a little bit running just in case price continues to go down. Because we don't know. Regardless, of, even if uh, OBs are the continue, are the reason why you know why the markets move the way they do, we don't know that price is going to react to it. Okay, we will never know that price is unpredictable. So just bear that in mind. So that's why we're taking. Who's that? Oh, sorry. Just finish. Finish. I I, I have a question. To ask. Yes. Uh, yeah. Go on. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. Um. On this chart you're looking at, right? Um, where would we say the OB is for the structure that broke um, the 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 high? No, on on your left, on your left. This. Yes, yes, yes. So the structure point came from here because if you're looking at previous structure, you got one structure, two structure, three. That came from this impulsive move here. And remember, this impulsive move can't come from retail traders. So this impulsive move is a footprint that the institutions were active at this point. So that gives us a true example that the, um, that the institutions were active here. But in terms of here, although this came and broke structure again, again, you've got clear imbalance that price needs to come. So this is just inducement, okay? Uh, this is just uh, enticing traders to take trades from this point. Because if, for example, if there was a candle wick that came and touched this OB, I wouldn't even look down here because there'll be no reason to. I'll be looking for a trade here. But price has got a reason to come back here and to go up because of the imbalance that needs to be corrected. So okay. is that the same okay, thing yes. as a one minute situation? Is that the same? Th oh God. Is that the same thing as a one minute situation that was happening here? You've still got that clean OB below which is why price had to come and mitigate it. And what we do is going to go for the extremes to have a safer and higher probability trade. Okay, thank you. Yeah? Yes, yeah, yeah I, I understand. Perfect. Um, another Wait, question that... Oh, go on. Oh, go on. Yeah, so basically, um, let's say on the daily, it's a, um, let's say it's a bearish trend. Like, I'm not talking about this, I'm just talking hypothetically. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, so let's say uh, it's a bearish trend. Uh, you just had confirmation from those um, the rules that you just told us for the market structure on the hourly and there's been a change of trend. Um, yeah. Would you trade with that new trend on the hourly or do you try to stick with the daily that's already there? So again, that's going back to understanding the fractal nature of the market. So you're trading counter trend. You're mm -hmm. trading counter trend of the higher time frame, right? So yeah. you can trade that. That's not a problem. 
but just be realistic with your targets and mm -hmm. obviously be a bit more aggressive when you're taking your partials or taking take profit because cool. a higher time frame trend is against you. But in that case, say for example, you've got the daily, say for, oh, okay. Say for example, you've got this break of structure, right? So the daily OB is up here, but then on yeah. the hourly, say that's a different color, but say the hourly is doing this, we've got a change in trend, right? Mm -hmm. We can trade that up to our point of interest here. Right. Okay. There's no harm in doing that. And again, this can be replicated on any time frame that you're using. If you use the one hour for your base and use the one minute for your change in trend, you can get away with just that. Mm -hmm. Same thing. It can replicate on any time frame. Cool. Um, the question I was going to answer was uh, when to take partials. Um, so taking partials and when you take profit is completely up to you. Um, what you'll do is if you're going pro trend, it's like target structure points that you're going to break. So say, um, say you're taking this bot long here from the hourly, the first TP that you'll probably have is this structure because price has no reason to react down and come back off it. And actually it kind of does because it didn't really break the structure. So yeah, potentially have your TP here, okay? Or have your TP at every structure point here or to take partials. It's completely up to you how you take um, that. In terms of moving your stop loss to break even, it's going to be the first, um, first or second break of structure. If you get a break of structure right like this and you're already in the trade, but then you're obviously getting break of structures here, but still it's not breaking structure of the structure that was formed. This OB still needs to be tapped. So don't move your stop loss just yet until this structure has been broken because then price has no reason to come back here. You can use this OB for your next entry should you want it. So be careful when you're moving your stop loss. Sometimes we can move it a bit too early. So that answered that question. I don't think he's, anything, he's in this call, you know. No, he's not. Um, James, what other questions do we have? Got a question. I'll go. So um, it's actually about a specific uh, pair, but it kind of feeds into what we were talking about, about um, market yeah. structure. Uh, USD CAD, I'm looking at it, and I think, I don't know why, but I think it's, it's, it's going to start a reversal, but I'm not sure. So what I did was that, I'm, uh, because on the hourly, it's, it's, it's inside the, 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 not the hourly, is it, is it the daily order block? I believe it's, it's already inside the daily order block. Oh, yeah. Where, so, but on the 15 yeah. minute chart, it's, I feel like it's going to retrace back down to the 15 minute order block and then come up. Would you, um, when you, when you're in like a daily order, uh, order block, um, it doesn't have to touch the, the most extreme base of it. So the weekly low, it can just be in it and then reverse, can't it? Yeah. If your entry criteria is met in some, it doesn't matter what time frame, but if your entry criteria is met, there's no harm in taking it. Is that yeah. the same situation here though? Because obviously we've broken structure here this impulsive move, you've got this range, you need a successful retrace to confirm the price is changing. Yeah. Okay, that probably may have happened somewhere here. Um, if it did, then price should replicate to be fair. Let's have a look. Let me get rid of my drawings. It looks like it has. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so here, for example, this move came and broke this structure high. This structure was broken got here, but it retraced. That's a successful retrace that came and broke. Oh, sorry, the structs, the retrace came from here. So price still hasn't come back to here. So again, if that's, you're yeah, using it, that's, that's where my OB is. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So that confirms it because that was a move that came and broke the structure. So that's the, this is number one of confirmation of a trend. And that's number two, successful retrace. Okay. That's a very good example. Yeah. Wait, wait, then, um, wait, 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 sorry. I have a question. Yeah. Right. Um, the, the path that you said is the number one, right? There is an OB there. And then after the OB, that tiny bearish candle is what you will classify as a continuation, right? This one? No, the, like the lowest point of the path you leveled one. This one, yeah, is, no, the lowest part. The, <laughs> yeah. Where the equals are, Tams, on the bottom. Here, oh there. Uh, no, 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 no. The, the the equals. Other, yeah, low, low one, much lower. Fourteen fifty. Fourteen fifty. The the the, the faces. Here. The the you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Is that? Yes. Yeah, so these are continuations. Yeah. So so, 
So where is the OB now? Um, so the part that broke structure was actually from this part here, from what I can see. Yeah, from this OB here, which was tapped oh. and gone. But obviously we won't trade at this point because we don't have a confirmation that trend is going bullish. Okay, but then if that was the OB that broke that structure, yes, it did retrace and break much below it there. Yeah, but we shouldn't be looking for a trade at this point because um, remember, price is coming down bearish, right? It's not continuation of the bearish trend. Price is reversing, but we don't have confirmation that price is reversing. So, so when do we have a confirmation? So, oh. you know the rules I just said? Yes. Is obviously... What happened was um, we got this low that created this structural high. Yes, and then yes. we also got a retrace, right? But that retrace, these these little pullbacks, these little impulses, then nothing. But then this one comes and breaks structure. That confirms it. So that's number one of the rule. And that's number two. Okay. Or do we always okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so, so price needs to come back to number two. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah, so at this point, we won't be looking for a trade. Yeah, 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 be, be, because we haven't actually confirmed that it won't still drop much lower. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Till, till it actually broke that, for example, the lower high that we have there, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. No worries. Right, I, got, I got a question real quick. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like, the break of structures right and like the bos um why is it that you look at the bodies rather than and then some people look at ca like the candle wicks that has maybe like the break of structures because i'm i'm in between whether like to look at the you know the the break of structure as a wick break of structure or a candle close break of structure um so that's um so that's something that comes as a personal preference so when you're back testing Ideally, you'll try to find what obviously works best for you. For me, a body break just confirms it. It gives me a bit more confidence that, you know, price is bullish. For me, if it's just a wick break, um, if it's just a, normally it's like a long wick, which indicates a rejection. Um, so I don't trust them. Um, so I like to have a body. Some people like to have a body to body break. Again, it's, it's, it's your preference, but it still works either way if you want to take it that way sometimes waiting for a body break it does have its downsides that um you, sometimes you get a body break price comes back retraces mitigates the ob triggers perfectly and goes but it doesn't give doesn't give me um a clear bos so sometimes it does have that downside but i just get more confidence myself to use a body break cool cool doesn't james is wick I'm pretty sure it does, James. Yeah, I do wick, but only if it's like, um, not if it's like a big reaction. So if it's like a fat off wick to the upside and then it yeah. comes straight back down, I'm not interested. But if it wicks up, wicks up again, and then maybe wicks up again and then comes back down, then I'll, I'll count that. Because cool. like Tan says, it's completely up to you, really. Yeah, because yeah. I, un I understand that. Some, obviously, because price is so fractal, um, mm. like on a one minute, that could be a wick, but on the 15 second time frame, that's the actual full body close. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's just what you find uh, works for you in your in your back testing. For me, I've always used um, body breaks um, for as long as I remember, to be fair. I've never used wicks. Um, I, just, I don't know. I just found like I was getting more fake outs using wicks and uh, the body to body break, something that I have came across quite recently. So as a new thing for me, um, I've not really tested it much. Actually, I might look into it just to see how effective it is. But for me, that's that's that was new, so I never used it. Little back testing session for you tonight. No, not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to ask, uh, NFP is that was that the first, or is it going to be the next Friday? Uh, it'll be the Friday coming. Yeah. Cool. So um, the first was Friday. That was a bank holiday, so it won't be that. Yeah. Cool. 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 Did I answer the first question, by the way, about USD CAD? I can't remember because it was interrupted. Yeah, yeah, you kind of, yeah, yeah, you did. Did I cover everything that you wanted, or? Um, yes, I was just basically asking. Um, 
kind of once you're in a daily wait let me let me look back to it uh, yeah, like so, a daily pos then um basically was that was is, is that a good idea to try and preemptively try and see if that's a reversal well is it's a risk anyway every trade's a risk but is that basically was that yeah. a good idea kind of that the, the idea that i had of, of, of bouncing off that 15 minute um pos to see if it, it does reversal yeah i mean it's already mitigated like half the ob so you're sort of safe to take it anyway from this yeah, point yeah, yeah. It doesn't right. always reach the extremes. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, yeah, that's the video on GPUSD. It didn't reach it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if it does give you... So if you see the entry criteria, you know, if it's met, then obviously take it. There's no... We've got full confidence and full reasoning yeah. why. Yeah. So as long as you have the why, then there's no reason yeah, yeah, why yeah. you shouldn't. All right. And would you set your stop loss below the daily low? Would you just set a couple pips below where the, um, the OBS um, closes? You'll use uh, whatever OB, you'll put it below the low of the OB that you're using yeah, to enter. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, James, did Ben say what other questions he had? I think I covered everything in that. I think you have. I'll have a quick look. Um, I, I covered the partial one. The, BS, the BOS questions were answered. Um, I mean, to be fair, I had a few questions for Ben about... Um, you know his investments and whatnot, but obviously he's not here. Ah, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I can't answer for you. I'm, I'm afraid. Where is um, he? I don't actually. I don't actually know. He said it's an emergency, so. Fair enough. That means his missus is having a go at him. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. The only other one was is is FTMO reliable and sustainable to live off. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, that was mine. Yes and no. I mean, if you're not, um, if you're a consistent trader and can consistently withdraw from FTMO, then fair enough. But you can't expect to be living off that. So in the last Zoom call, when we explained, obviously, because it's good to have more incomes, because obviously people can, you can be full-time traders and live off it. Yes. But what you realize is most full-time traders have other things to um, you know, to make things sufficient because you can't rely on the fact that you'll make a certain amount every month and coming in with a, you know, with a target is going to make it hard. You're going to start chasing that target. So, you know, like for me, I still have other incomes coming in because trading is not always consistent. doesn't matter how consistent I am, but trading itself is not consistent. So having other other incomes is a good thing but trading can get you that um but yeah true fdmo is reliable and if you treat it as your main account then yeah fair enough you can you don't want it to that. your primary income anyway just because of taxes no yeah. yeah exactly it's yeah it's not the best income and i know it's like it's probably what you see on instagram is that people are claiming that this is all they do for a living but you know it's most of it is affiliate marketing you know yeah. like vertex is a side income for me ben and james it, it's just, it's another income really so um so yeah, uh, Al Alan has just sent a link into the chat. Somebody asked when if he was in it, but who's asking when it was? No, someone asked what it was. Oh, okay. So NFP is non-farm payroll, um, where I don't really know much about it. There's a big news release on um, with the with America basically, and it changes to dollar. But what you realise it affects all markets essentially. Um, I don't personally trade it because it's very, there's no point. Um, you're basically gambling your money in that sense. Um, Markets are volatile then. Yeah, very volatile. And your spreads are really bad, so it doesn't work. And on FTMO, you will not, you're not allowed to trade FT, uh, NFB anyway. Why well, are you not? No, it doesn't let you, unless, to be fair, if you're already in a trade, it's fine, but it doesn't let you place a trade during NFP, so you can't trade any of the spikes. It won't register on their trade copier. Tans, what do you think of this company called um, Wait, Ewan? Ewan, what's uh, CTA? Are you here? Um, it's like something in... City, City Traders... Yeah. Yeah. Traders yeah. I think you sent a link for that. Yeah, because after every 10%, they double your account size and the cap is 2 million. So, you so does 5 percent They do the same thing. I think 5% is better, but... Yeah, yeah. I, think, um, I think the thing with FCMO is that the leverage is probably, probably the one. best I've seen. The thing is with FTMO, if you do the maths, it's really like with a hundred K account, you really got ten K because you can only go down. You can only go down. Um, what's yeah. Ten percent. So in reality, you only got ten K. So and then the leverage is a hundred to one. So that means you got a million 
um, purchasing power. Mm. Yeah, it's so, basically it's the purchasing power. That's that's what it is, really. Yeah, it's a million. You got a million in purchasing power for one hundred k FDM account. But like with stuff like what's it? IC market. What's it? Five hundred one. Five hundred one. Yeah. So if yeah. you had if you had six k in the IC market account, you'd basically have a three hundred k FDM account. It's the same buying power in it. Yeah. But yeah. you see the same profits. But we, uh, yeah, but without the without the stipulations that FTM have, you're not just profit sharing. You don't. You mm. can trade how you like. So I think, yeah, even if you have FTMR, I think the, 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 the end goal is to whatever money you make, put it into your pro and personal account so you can trade how you like. Yeah. Mm. I hear that. Yeah. Too, so. And I hope that so, most of you have that goal because <laughs> I'll be honest, FTMO is another stress that nobody needs when you're trading, to be fair. Like, um, I, did, I, I froze it for December because I know I'm not, I'm not going to trade that, that much anyway. But it's another hassle that you have to think about. Like, oh, are you getting close to your loss limit? Or, you know. Because I think I almost, I almost lost, I almost lost one of my FTMOs in sep- end of September or November, something like that. I was very close to loss limit, and I was completely unaware because it's linked to my personal account, and I'm just taking trades as normal. Uh, actually, no, when was it? August, August time, and then I switched over to having only high probability trades on FTMO, and then yeah. being a little bit risky on my personal. So you're nearly losing your FTMO really fucks with your psychology. Mate, yeah, it's it, thing is, it was more. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't aware of the loss limit at the time because I, I don't check the FMO account. Um, yeah, but, it just links yeah. him in. Yeah, uh, I've got a question real quick. Um, in terms of like the trade copiers, like what are, what are some uh, trade copiers that you can use? So there's a website called Social Trader Tools. It's probably the cheapest one and probably the best best one to uh, to use. It's very simple. You just put in your login details. It's twenty pounds a month for one account, and then if you, it is weird because you can't just add account account by account. So you only buy one. You could buy one account copier, or you can buy five. And it goes. I think it goes in sets of five, which is uh, five is sixty pounds a month or sixty dollars. Um, that's the only one I'm aware of. James, are, are you aware of another one? No, the only one I've ever used is social trade tools. Yeah, we've we both used that, and we've never. Sometimes it does have issues if uh, if it's like a news spike that happens. The trade, where the heck did Ben come from? The oh. ben, uh, the sometimes the trade doesn't trigger on your trade copier. That's only if it's like spiked to news, which is why FT mode don't let you trade the news anyway because of this reason. I'll put the link in. I t- I put it in somewhere, but I'll put the link in the Discord in the link section for you for that one. Oh, yeah, another thing I wanted to say about the CTI companies they they allow you to hold over weekends, so there's so you don't have to close by the weekend. And someone like um, Raf, for example, he's holding. You're a trades. marketer. Who me? Uh... <laughs> yeah, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, what I'm saying is that two million, like you know, you know. What's the leverage? Yeah, yeah. On the, the lot of money. Now. It makes makes more sense than yeah, if if it does, if it is true. They have a max lot size though, which it limits to you, like it limits you to about zero point four percent risk. Or Sounds exactly that five percent though. Yeah, it, they've got a max lot size, but, but don't like they have like a one point five million um two million cap two million, two million yeah. cap yeah. So it's and every every ten percent you make, you get a double account size. Yeah. Oh, it's it's just, given this strategy, I think it's 50, this strategy, 50 profit split as well instead, actually. Yeah, but mm. if, you make, if, you, if your account's that size, then the capital yeah. makes it worth it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. For, uh, copy traders as well. Um, FX Blue have one, the uh, verification. It's a bit like profit. Um, what's it called? My FX Book, but they also Luke. have a copy trading Luke. tool. Book. Book. <laughs> <laughs> that was so dumb. That's a, um, <laughs> was, there, was there any other questions? You know, regarding uh, lot sizes, what's what difference does it make, or how much of a difference does it make? Uh, As in, what do you mean? Regarding, um, you know, we were talking about Fiverr than um, CTI compared to, let's say, FTMO. Um, so the main difference that I found is obviously when you're using um, uh, when you're using this uh, this strategy is your lot size can be crazy, right? Regardless of what um, a size account you have. The problem is, is you may not be able to use the sufficient lot size to like make one percent or zero point five percent risk. Like on my spread betting account, I can only use zero point two five percent risk to safely manage my margin. Um, 
so I'm limited by what lot size I can use, even though that account is bigger than my IC one, if that makes sense. Okay, so if we, let's say we, um, Fiverr, for example, you start at 80K, let's say you can go up to 320 or 160, doesn't that, with the lot size is not automatically go higher, or is, are you just limited to? I don't actually. I don't actually know much about. Message someone inside the company, and then they'll. I think they make changes depending on your account. You have to message them privately or something. Like that. All right, fair enough. Thanks. Yeah, I've never used five percent, so I, I don't really know how it works on the lot size. The one that me and Ben remember, the one that we tried to use, they gave us a two hundred forty k account as a loan. Uh, and yeah. um, you can only use zero point four, but that was fixed. Oh, what happened and, to that guy? I've never seen him since. <laughs> oh no, I blanked him. He kept asking, and he was like, he was very. He kept messaging me every single day to ask when am I going to sign up. I just thought it just seemed a bit weird, like the fact that he's chasing me. If he's, oh, if he's, if he's actually earning like what a million a month or whatever he said, you know, why would he be chasing me of all people? So the marketer. He's just exactly. the marketer. He works marketing for them. He gave me a free account as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> I blew it up. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think I'm here? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like their lot sizes were fixed, and you know, you know I'm not going to use 0 0.4 on a 240k account. That's, that's that's stupid. I could do that on a 1,000 pound account. Um, it's actually 0 0.4, yeah, on a 1,000 pound account, I could get away with that. So, what's mm. the point? True. Um, any other questions? This is a very good Zoom call, to be fair. Shush. <laughs> you said that. Yeah. Yeah. Think said that. Tons, I've got like a little, little weird work. question. Wait, a weird why, why, question. Do you, why do you not have auto on when you're on your chart? Like, you know, in the bottom right, you see auto. Why should I have it on? No, why do you not have it on? Because like, you're always like zooming in and out, and it just seems so long to me. I don't know why you do it. Is that oh, what makes people that, profitable? Right? If you do that, you instantly double your profit. <laughs> like, what you is it? Put auto on and, and zoom in. Like, put auto on and then scroll back. No, like, like use use your cursor and just drag back, and it will just auto fit you to the screen. You don't need to like zoom in and out. Whoa! Wait! <laughs> I didn't oh, know that. God. Mad! <laughs> Mad! Because like, every like yeah, video yeah. you make, I see you sitting there for like ten minutes, like scrolling up and down, <laughs> trying to get into the right place. My oh, eyes. I have... another tip for you as well. Okay, lads, didn't know that. You can also like right click here and then click on reset chart, and it goes back to normal. Wait! Oh, hold on. wait! Does oh, it? Oi! I didn't, I didn't know the little <laughs> auto thing. There's a little yeah, reset button as is, well if you really want to. This is to. mad. No, like, so as long as you just don't like hit the side and scroll up and down, then it will just keep it on. Mate, too. The videos are going to be bare quick now. <laughs> <laughs> Does your mouse not have a roller then, Tans? Oh, well, yeah, that's to be fair. I, you just zoom in. You always if you, click if you on the hold, I think it's control. Like If you put your mouse on where you want to go and then hold control yeah, and zoom in, control. it will zoom in directly on that. Yeah, yeah. Are you joking? Wait, wait. wait. Oh. What do I do? Hold control and then scroll up. And it was even five minutes to find <gasps> the control. No way! Oh shit! Shit! <laughs> I'm literally a mind blown. I didn't know that. <laughs> this is that's no oh, way. Oh, Learn new things every day. Oh, this is sick. All right, fair enough. I, I got one more question. So, if you have got two pairs that you're looking at in your watch list, says, let's say it's Euro USD and GBP USD, and you see kind of similar things because obviously they're heavily correlated. Um, yeah. Would you just pick the one that uh, maybe has more imbalance in the forex strength? Um, I'll go for I got, I got a funny one for this okay. on how you decide, right? So what you can do, have you ever heard of um, market sentiment? Yeah, what, what, what retail is doing, just do the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Them. So you can have a quick look. And basically, you just want to go against retail. So say you want to sell EU. Yeah. And retail will go in the same way, but then you see the USD CHF, it, they're trying to sell that as well, but it looks good for a buy, then take the one that goes against them. Okay. What do you use the, which one do you use? Like the IG one? Yeah, or just my effects book. My effects book, okay, cool. Yeah, but sentiment's pretty good. I was going to do a post tomorrow, so I don't think that many people know about that. Yeah, I used to look at the IG, because IG got one with, um... yeah, yeah, that's got market sentiment. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks. That's what I do. 
All right. Is there is there any other trading view tips that you guys have? Someone said, "Oh, t- I know that. I knew that one. I knew the inverse one." To be fair. Yeah, I want more tips like that auto thing. I've never seen that. That was sick. I don't know about that. I've, I've literally had that one, one since I started trading. Oh, why not? The control one is sick. This one is decent. Oh, I can zoom into it. Look mm. at that. What? Can I, if I want to see here, boom, I'm there. If I want to see here, boom, I'm there. <laughs> oh, no. Nuts. Ben, where uh, were you? Uh, busy. He's got diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone hey. passed FTMO with one trade? Me and Ben did. Yeah, I mean, they actually did a video on that, to be fair. <laughs> well, it wasn't technically one trade. One was break even, then the other one was one trade, which passed. So technically, you passed so one two trade. trade. <laughs> yeah, so two, we took two trades, but yeah. Ash, no, we I mean, technically, we'll play some both side by side. So, well, yeah, still two trades. No, Ash, I'm why are you so trade. red? You know what? It's, it's the light, lad. It's the light. <laughs> You're high. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was that using was order blocks. no, that was using order blocks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Is there any other questions? Um, if not, obviously, end. We'll end the Zoom here. I assume nothing. Is there anything in the chat that I didn't answer? That was a good Zoom call in the end. Oh, Harvey's a bit upset because he said the auto button. He told me that ages ago. But to be honest, Harvey, I don't really remember. Them. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone Harvey. actually listen to Harvey? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Harvey, one of the OGs. Uh, right. Um, anyway, um, obviously we're all back trading this week anyway, so we'll be more active into in our charts group as well. Um, so have a good week. Obviously trade safe. I don't know how markets will be this week, to be fair. Um, it does take a few weeks for things to settle, but most of you have done really well anyway. Uh, it's been it's been crazy. Like some of the results I've seen. Given the fact that markets are were supposedly dead, you guys are whacking out numbers like nothing. So, like, fair play to you guys. Um, but yeah, Kian everything should be. FTMO with John. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kian, yeah, well done, Kian. Is he's here now? Huh? Yeah, he's here. Yeah. So well done to Kian and Jordan uh, for passing FTMO. Um, that's Is it. it yeah. so how... uh, Ben's the one to speak about. That. <laughs> Wait, did um, Ben? Did you ever send out the hoodies for the two? Yeah. Oh, you did, right? Yeah, I've got mine. And couldn't you go this? Yeah. Yeah, I've got mine, bro. I I sent it on the group. Yes, but I didn't receive it yet. But (laughs) (laughs) what the world? Because he's halfway across the world. Like, come on. (laughs) I didn't get a hoodie. Tuni basically, Tuni basically came to my missus' house and then hand delivered it. Oi, James. Did he actually? Huh? Did he actually? No, no, no. But um. What you call it? He's only like about what 20 30 minutes away from my missus. Oh, no, you don't want him to go to your house, mate. Okay, if he, if he comes near my missus, then um, we're gonna have a problem, aren't we? Hey, it's right, he won't do anything, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, he should James. be perfectly fine. <laughs> James, I've got a tip, mate. If you hold someone's head in the group, hold an F for uh, F, hold an F. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> you can't that even say <laughs> yeah, I'm that amazed. Look at that. Mate, do you know how quick I'm gonna like whack out these OBs? <laughs> you know, every single tool on TradingView has a shortcut. If you hover over it, it'll tell you what no it is. No one asked you, Ben. Shut up. Alt and F. Well, what is that? Gives you Fibonacci. Oh, sir. Oi, look at that madness here. There's keyboard right. shortcuts on the way, on the. If you go to the little thing at the top left hand corner, you know, the three lines. Yeah, over there, where it's where you got number 11. Right now, yeah. <laughs> so you go down to keyboard shortcuts, click there, and that's everything you need. Click on it. Yeah, and that's all the shortcuts. Oh, shit, can you it's like, it's like GTA 5 cheat code, isn't it? Oh, oh, F4 is a really good shortcut. Shut up, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I may be dumb, but not that dumb. Wait, Tans, Tans, I've got a question here. How do you get rid of your side on... What's it? The bar on the side, and you got like the little toolbar at the bottom. I can't tell you. Board. Secret. Oh fuck off, man! How do you do it? Uh, the, basically, you got the drawing panel here, yeah. and you put wherever you want, and you just put a star next to it. Yeah. And it comes up here, and then you can just hide your, just hide that. Cool. What's okay. your six one in the arrow tool thing? What? One, on your two, favorite spot. Yeah. Was the path? 
Oh. I just draw lines. You Ben, if you actually made videos, you know about that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> draw mine with lines. Chat lines even worse. I did expect that one too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I hope everyone knows you has a good week and uh, I'll speak to you all in the group. I hope I've answered all your marking, market structure questions as well. Um, I will do a video on this and find examples as well on the charts. Um, but I hope the rule-based method will help clear things up for you guys. Um, well, I hope it does. If it doesn't, I'm not sure how... I'll, I'll find another way to teach it, but uh, but yeah, hope that works out for this week. But uh, for now, I'll leave, we'll leave you guys be, and uh, yeah, trade safe. Yeah, thanks, Towns. Thanks, Towns. Yeah, thanks, nice boys. Thanks. You know, lads. A bit. A bit. How do I end this call? How do I end the call, mate? Make sure you stop recording first, mate. Oh yeah. <laughs>